In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can grind leak code without forgetting everything. So there's this well-known strategy, or let's just say popular strategy that candidates employ, where if they have one or more target companies, they focus on questions that that company has asked in the past, and they try to solve as many as they can in the time frame they have. But there's a huge flaw with this strategy if you're going to forget everything you learned. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how you can actually overcome this and tweak your approach to make it more effective. So let's say you've solved a large amount of LECO problems, or you plan to. By the way, I don't recommend solving all LECO problems. That's not really a good use of time. But let's say you just solved a large number of problems. If you can't remember, you know, 90% plus of what you've learned, if you're not retaining what you're learning, what's the point? It's a colossal waste of time. It's almost like you're trying to fill a leaky bucket. Clearly, that's not a good idea, because at the end of the day, the box is going to be empty. You've got to spend that time trying to do something else. This diagram, if you haven't seen it before, depicts the forgetting curve. Essentially, what it does is it depicts how the human brain forgets things, but also how you can get your brain to remember things. So the vertical axis is an indication of memory retention, like how, do you, how much of what have you learned do you retain? So 100% is very good. The higher, the better. And the horizontal axis, the x-axis, it simply just depicts the passage of time. So we focus on just the curve sloping downwards. That's saying, for example, on day zero, if I learn something, let's say you have a high retention rate, let's say it's 100%. If you don't engage with the idea over time, it's going to drop. That's what the, these slopes show. Now, in terms of how you can make your brain remember things, what they've scientifically proven and seen, and empirically people have observed this, is you learn something over time you forget but if you engage with that idea you remember it again but you start forgetting again you engage with it again you remember but you forget again you engage with it again the same pattern follows but something is happening because after each recall the observation is your rate the rate at which you forget is slowing for that idea provided the spacing at which you do these recalls is good enough. We'll come back to what that means. So day zero, I learn something, I start forgetting. After a day, I refresh. After two days, refresh. After whatever days, I refresh. If the time interval is optimal, so you're not like waiting too long before you do a recall or refresher, um, you notice that the slope, so if we look at the slope, those familiar with like slopes from maths, gradients, might really understand this but the idea is the simplified way to explain it is if I learn something the ideal scenario is that I just have a horizontal line a flat line so a horizontal line like this red line will show that as time passes my retention is a hundred percent or let's say your retention was some high level you know my retention is at that high level it doesn't change and what you notice is if we look at each of these downward sloping lines so this is the first one this is the second one this is the third one. It's getting closer to being a horizontal line. It's almost like these sloping lines are like rising upwards, upwards. So over time at some point, you know, your retention is 100%. This concept you're learning is now in your long-term memory. So that's kind of your ultimate goal. The gist of the diagram is that if you learn something and you don't engage with that idea, you don't recall it, you don't review it, you don't use it, then you lose it. Your brain is like a leaky bucket in that sense. So you're gonna forget. So if you're gonna learn something that you want to remember, if you're only gonna engage with it once, what's the point of even learning in the first place? However, if you wanna remember, then you need to do recalls, you need to repeatedly engage with an idea, but you need to space the interval at which you do this. And a good analogy for this is like if you're trying to build muscle. So you want a bit of muscle, you don't just go to the gym on day one and you know lift and then you never lift again. You also don't go to the gym day one lift and then maybe six months later lift again and six months later lift again. You're not gonna see any gains. You want some kind of consistency if you wanna achieve a, some gains. So let's talk about how you, the, the interval. So there's two parts. The first part is the fact that there needs to be some repetition some re-engagement in the idea. And this repetition isn't like memorizing and isn't just simply reviewing, like reading something again. 
it's applying that knowledge, you know, testing your understanding, forcing yourself to recall, maybe solving another problem that, you know, reuses the same idea. But then the second part is the intervals at which you have that engagement. In terms of intervals, a baseline spacing could be day one you learn something, day three you re-engage with that idea, day seven, day 14, day 30. You can obviously tweak this, but what you can see is that the spacing is lengthening. So day one to day three, there's a two day interval, day three to day seven, there's a four day interval, day seven to day 14, seven day interval. So the, the gaps are increasing. And the idea is you're getting to the point where if you don't touch that idea after a long enough time, if you still remember very quickly and with high confidence, then that's a sign that this is getting lodged into your long, long term memory. If that's going to simplify things. At some point, it gets stuck in your long-term memory. This is why a lot of people still remember the alphabets because they engage with it so much over a certain time interval, maybe primary school or whenever they learned this, nursery school, and it's something that's stuck in their brain forever. And you want to do that. Well, maybe you don't want these data structures and the algorithms concepts stuck in your brain forever, but you want it to persist enough that you can recall them and apply them in interviews. You don't want to just learn and forget. I think that's the minimum objective of anyone going through this process. It would be nice if it can stick in your brain forever, but that would probably mean just more repetitions. If you're really time pressed, let's say you have just a few days to interview, then you can use a tighter spacing. So you can you know, learn something on day one, review it day two, review it day five, review day 10. And when I say review, actually I mean a recall. So that could mean applying that knowledge in a different concept, that could mean reviewing whatever you wrote, whatever you noted down. Um, as long as you're recalling and engaging with that idea, that counts as uh, repetition. You don't necessarily have to bear the burden of tracking these intervals and which days you have to recall, although it's something you can do. There's tools that do this for you, like flashcard tools like Anki, which can help you track your space repetition and intervals and how your recall, how strong your recall is. So you can take care of that for you. You can use spreadsheets like Excel, like Google Sheets. You can also use Notion, which is a really useful tool. There's other tools, tools like Remnote, a bunch of others. So you spot for choice. So what I'm gonna do is in the next video, I'm going to do a practical, take a real problem and show how you can use some of these tools and adapt it to your system so you can have a strategy that allows you to actually remember what you learned. So if you're gonna solve you know, hundreds of problems, you at least wanna be able to retain what you're learning so you can apply them to new scenarios or even if you get you know, like a similar problem, right? There's also the Coditioning website, coditioning.com, that has a lot of resources that'll help you on your overall journey to get interview ready. So things like mock interviews with uh, an experienced interviewer, senior engineer, um, you can do AI mock interviews, so you can do those you know, on demand 24 seven at your leisure. You don't have to schedule anything. Diagnostic tests that can help you identify your weaknesses. You can join our Discord community. We even have workshops on system design, on behavioral, on low level design and coding. So you can join these, these are free. And crash courses as well. Whether it's system design, so some people, you know, they do interviews, they don't get feedback, or they don't get to do enough system design in their day job. You know, if you're just learning through theory, that might be a difficult way to get good at it. So you can do crash courses with a senior engineer who can give you feedback as you solve real life interview problems, but also get you through the fundamentals so you have a strong foundation to build on. And we'll just basically guide you through the whole process from you know beginner to interview ready or wherever you are, even if you're intermediate, help you plug those gaps and polish your weaknesses, polish your skills and you know strengthen your weaknesses. I'm going to give you a quick demo of Coditioning.com, which has a lot of resources that can help you get interview ready and ace your interviews. But if you like the content so far, you know, hit that like button, subscribe for more. Let's go. So right now, the Coditioning site's homepage looks something like this. And if you look at the top menu bar, you can see a bunch of categories of areas we can help with. In fact, I'll just do a very, very quick demo. So you can just get an idea of the resources there that can help you. So looking at the top, the nav bar, the navigation bar, one of the areas I like to highlight are the diagnostics, so the diagnostic tests. You can see diagnostic tests and algorithms and data structures, system design. If you like production engineering stream, there's questions on networking operating systems. And you can do these tests, they're really quick, they're multiple choice, 
we make it hard for you to guess because you look at the question, you can say you don't know and skip. But if you do want to attempt, if you're wrong, we give you a penalty, but you can then you know, answer and you get an evaluation at the very end. So I'm just going to skip. So you know what areas to focus on so you can prioritize. So there's a bunch of diagnostic tests. Check them out. We have mock interviews. We got human in love interviews so you can get a coaching session or a mock interview or even a coached mock interview. That's where you get more real time feedback. Um, tailor to your target company or just a general one. So check check this part of the site out. And there's also AI mock interviews. We have some for company specific ones based on their real questions they've asked, but you have an AI interviewer. Um, you can check that out as well. If you want your CV optimized, we've got that. If you want more advice, like company specific advice, check out the blogs, tips, company specific tips, and just general tips that will help you. Um, especially this one on reducing errors um, when you're coding on the pressure and interviews. There's a technique that I discussed, check it out. Um, we also have this beta mode, um, learn mode with some courses, which you can check out. We have a crash course on system design and other topics, and we have workshops. If you're interested in coding and behavioral workshops or system design workshops, these are free, you can join. Um, it's part of our Discord community. So if you scroll to the bottom of our website, the footer has a link to our Discord community which you can join. We have close to 5,000 members and you find people on the same journey with you, people who've done the interview you're doing or people who are also preparing. You can exchange idea, thoughts and help each other, boost morale. You can even find study buddies. So curious to know what your thoughts are on these, you know, the spectrum I discussed and the companies at the extremes and the middle and the strategies kind of suggested. What are your strategies? Do you have anything to add? Uh, do share in the comments and if you like this video hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this or solutions to system design problems or other content relevant to helping you you know land that nail that tech interview um, do hit the subscribe button share with your friends if you think they will benefit from it otherwise see you in the next video